Welcome to a short reflection by Sebastian Mahfoud in Canto 16 of Dante's Inferno. No sooner than does Ser Brunetto Latini leave than do three new souls show up, racing in circles around Dante so that they can talk without stopping their movement. They are souls about whom Dante had asked Chiaco back in the circle of the gluttons. And Virgil's response to them is interesting in the deference he suggests Dante show to them. For they had been major participants in Florence's First Republic and had signed as witnesses the treaties that Ser Brunetto Latini had drawn up with the neighboring city-states of Siena, Arezzo, and Pisa. In this light, it is odd that Latini would be forbidden to associate with them in hell, since there seems to be no prescript against joining a band and associating in some sense of community. For the impact these three had had on Florence while alive, they ask simply, like Latini did, that they be remembered by the living above, though they remain dead in hell. This will not be the case for many of the sinners below, who most ardently wish to be forgotten by man. Dante and Virgil make it to the edge of the seventh circle by this point, and look out over it into a black hole that is too steep for them to climb down. Indeed, they had trouble climbing down the broken fundament leading into the seventh circle. To reach that level, they are in need of some help, which will also require to descend into the next sinkhole of circle nine. And Virgil solves the problem by asking Dante for a cord tied around his waist. This is the first Dante has made mention of the cord, which he says he once thought to use to snare the leopard, the irony being that the poets are about to descend into the circle of the fraudulent, which the leopard in the dark wood of error symbolizes. The cord indicates that he is a third order Franciscan, which will be an object of note when we meet the Franciscans and Dominicans in the fourth sphere of heaven. This realization for us also adds another dimension to the poet who is narrativizing to a great extent the philosophy of St. Thomas, a Dominican. In what sense, might we wonder, is he also narrativizing the philosophy of St. Bonaventura, a Franciscan, whose writings might have also influenced his philosophical training? The dignity of the damned has by now been fairly well asserted by Dante, who implicitly ascribes human dignity to all those souls with whom he has felt compassion and pity, and explicitly ascribes it to those for whom he has demonstrated no pity, namely Farinata, Latini, and the three who consumed this canto. So why the dignity ascribed to folks who deserve their infernal punishment? This can perhaps be explained by paragraph 22 of Dominus Jesus, written by then Cardinal Ratzinger and promulgated on August 6, 2000. He explains that all souls are equal in dignity, but not all creeds are equal in dignity. Those who make up the population of hell may not have lost their intrinsic human dignity. After all, they're still worthy of punishment and still get to go to the place they consciously chose to go to within hell. This is what makes sense of the souls yearning for their punishment on the banks of Acheron. It's in this light, too, that hell retains its character as the greatest expression of God's love. For God so loves us that he gives us free will.